morning. I mean, if the water, the water's coming up. It's going to be hip. Yeah. Stay more up. It should be yeah. Hip. Yeah. I would think. Don't you think stable? Stable is better stable than or, or up. Yeah. Falling kind of gets them a little bit like. But I don't know, they're probably used to it this time of year. It just makes them harder to catch when it's falling. Yeah. Too. The last tournament, water on both lakes came up about a foot. On both lakes? Yeah. Oh, including the upper lake? Yeah. That's the upper lake was real And lake. then it dropped during our tournament, it dropped. The upper lake dropped like crazy. And now it's. Um, when you're looking at point one oh inches, or you're not talking about feet, are you? Yeah. Yeah. It's a foot, Scott. Last week it fell a foot. In the past two weeks, it cycled like a foot. That's the that's March till now. I mean, that's two I'm, months ago. I don't care about that. What about last week? Okay, well, or last five days. There's the seventeenth. So you want the last five days? Been coming up. Last five days. Okay. Now it's going down. The sixth, eleventh, it was Here. down. It came up during our tournament. April 15th, it peaked. 16th, it was peaking, and then it started dropping. So a That's week still ago, 10 days ago. All right, so it started dropping, 16th. and it's stable now on the 21st. Today's the 24th, right? The spawn cycle is what I'm jacking things up. Things that right? happen is this week, what's going on right now. I don't care about last month. When care. was that cold weather? No, but what he's saying is like when that water fell out a week or two ago, could have pulled a bunch of fish out. It could have. And, then it, and, and we had that cold collated. front. We had that cold front. Yeah. It was a severe cold front. Like, yeah. like so if that cold water. front hit during that thing drop in the water, it really held them up. Yeah. To his point, he's just thinking there might be a little few, a, a few more fish to have spawn this time of year as opposed to That's normal fish spawners. Normally. When you get out there on the water, you're going to see spawners. I mean, just spawners, I mean, just laying around like logs. Not everywhere, but they don't be like this. <laughs> We make bass fishing look like rocket science doing all this studying crap. It's we got bass that. fishing. I mean, <laughs> go out on the water, tie your stuff on, and catch them. Usually, when you look back at one of our tournaments, somebody is doing something in the top ten that you're like, I just looked past that because it was too simple. Yeah. I mean, like I didn't even think to do all that. the tournaments that I've done. That I, my, the best tournaments I've ever had are tournaments that I really didn't have a great practice, but I figured it out as the tournament went on. I will make a prediction right now. Yeah. Three to four, two to three of the top ten are just going to be skipping trees with a worm. Oh, yeah. yeah. You put that in your hand this time of the year? I think the wacky worm on the trees is the most consistent way to catch them because you're going to catch fry garters, Dang, we don't have you're going to catch spars at the same time. All right, where are you going? Lower? Mid lake. Yeah. <laughs> where are you putting it in? Back. Hey, I was here one time. I'm going to black. Please. I was here one time for, a, and it would have took way over 100 pounds. It would have took, if it had been a four-day turn, the Toyota there. The dude blew it out mid like the canal, like, oh, like 30 pounds a day in the canal on a jig. Yeah, that, was that the Thornhill? Old man? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. You hear it? Gobble? Huh. Big gobbler over there, Dave. We're at the Clarendon Club, man. They got turkey, deer, ducks, and bass. Don't they, McCoy? You gonna fish today? Huh? huh? Okeechobee, when you get on a little, uh, dollar pad thing like this, 
that's usually a really good area. They spawn in it, the bass fry hang out in it. Everything uses it, it's really good. I don't remember these being here last year. We were here a little earlier. So, you know, we just gotta take our time. It, it, we have to fish this a lot like Okeechobee in a way. It's areas, it's not a spot. You know, it's areas. We gotta find an area that's productive. Maybe this little bay right here is productive. Maybe that group of trees over there are productive. You know, we just gotta pick it apart. Totally opposite of what we just got through doing at Murray. Um, totally different baits too. We're gonna throw a speed worm, which is a love. Shatter baits, frog, you know, probably a big spook, things like that. So um, it's awesome. I'm excited. You know, I didn't do all that great last time we were here. The fish were on on a big spawning deal. I was up the river and whatever, it just didn't work out. The rain happened and muddied everything up. But uh, let's figure it out this week. We had a good tournament last week. And let's keep the uh, let's keep the momentum going. I mean, I know exactly where it is. I can see the fish on my oh, this other pan panoptics here. That's not a crappie, dude. It's long. It's 100% of a bass on a bed or something. <clears throat> it spun around quick. Came right back to it. Oh, powder, dude. Powder. It was about a three and a half pounder. It's a good one. Yeah. There's one on that tree, too. Dude, that's crazy. And what's crazy is that, you know, when you didn't have this, you just fished around you didn't, and you just fished right over all these fish. Like, that is 100% a bass. A gar don't sit there like that. Is this little shad? There's two of them on that tree. One's tied on the tree and one's, like that's the male. See him coming out like looking at the. All right, so it's turning towards my bait. He's got it. Oh, he took it, took my bait, took my bait. Got it. That's the male, which we knew it. And there's my bait, my other bait. <laughs> He spit it back up. <laughs> he spit my bait back up. You think they're spawning? <laughs> That's crazy. Spawning. I, I just, you know, I pitched that tree and I missed that fish. And um, pitched back in there. He bit it again, dude. So that's 100% spawning fish, which is cool. Little bandito bug. All right. First bite wasn't a big one, but look at that thing. Look at that line. Up by that tree, dude, and it took off. Decent little fish. Looks like he's been there a little bit. Another one on the tree. Just little males. Just little males. But they're eating the bandito bug. I had to fish real slow through here and just pick these trees apart. But we're getting bit, so now we just
just gotta find big ones. We just gotta find big ones. That's all we gotta do, man. I mean, come on, this is Santee Cooper. There's giant ones in here. There are giant ones in here. caught much anything good got to figure out how to catch a big one those fish were spawning on those trees back there they were just males there might be some females around but that wasn't um what the deal I changed locations ran down the lake a little bit farther see if there's some other stuff going on down here the main thing you have to figure out is like what are they are they spawning are they not spawning are they garden fry you know i don't know doesn't seem like they're spawning that good to be honest with you i went and checked that little shallow spot where there was a lot of beds in there last year and that was my little indicator to be honest with you i wanted to go in there if i'd have seen you know two or three beds that would have um spurred me to investigate a little more but zero fish in there zero so that means they're done in there now are they done out here in the main lake probably not totally but we need to find something I, I don't know if it's I just don't know I don't know yet Oh, that's a big one, dude. Oh, big, 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 big one. Big, big, big one. Look at this thing, dude. Wow. Look at this bass, guys. Look at this bass. That's a big one. Ooh. That's a big one, dude. That's a big one right there, guys. There we go. <laughs> wow. Dude, changed it up a little bit. Got in some grass. We go nasty right there. That's a beautiful fish, too, by the way. We got to get a nice picture of that thing. All right. All right, dude. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Okay. That's a big one. I gotta be careful on that now. Cover that hook up, dude. Watch one come up and eat it again. We don't wanna have that happen. That's a great big one. All right, now, we let a few more come up and sniff on it.
freaking cool, dude. Wow. Cool. All right. Hey, dude. All right, well, day one's in the books, guys. I don't know. I mean, I caught some fish on trees. Definitely a few fish spawning, but you know, those are just pretty much males. I caught that one good one in the grass, but I really couldn't duplicate it. I saw, you know, a handful of some fry garters, and those are the, the males that are actually protecting the fry. And they're not big. They're just a pound and a half, two pounds. They're not going to win the tournament by any means. They probably won't get a check. So, you know, you just have to try a different section of the lake tomorrow. You know, that's just basically what we have to do. But I did get some confidence in the trees. You know, I had to fish them really, really slow uh, to get the bites, which was which was cool. And, um, you know, I'm just going to try a different area tomorrow. We're going to run probably up to Jack Slough or up in the, the swamp area. See if we can't find a group of some biggins. Some sure enough biggins. So, I don't think Canterbury caught much today. I don't think Matt... Go ahead! I don't think Matt caught a whole bunch today. I mean, talking to him but he did have he probably had 10 or 12 bites on trees Matt did so you know he's gonna wacky worm he's gonna wacky worm to death so uh, can't right now what you got what you got everything good oh, yeah. Woo. you catch any more I stopped out there a few more did you did you see me where I was at sitting you came through the cut you know the little narrow spot I was there on the left where it opens up. I think that's where you must have caught I didn't a fish. See Day one, Santee Cooper wasn't too good to me. Caught a few, caught a few good ones, but uh, sort of hard to get bites. We're gonna have to figure this thing out though. Put together a few pieces of the puzzle each day. We got two more days. We'll be just fine. I know y'all have been watching the vlog for a while. I know that I've been using my Traeger forever. So we have, I think this is, I have three Traegers. I have this one, which is the tail gator. Took the legs off. I think I've had this one for six years now. It travels with us everywhere. And it has been through the ringer. I mean, probably 400,000 miles on this thing. All over the country. Just crazy. I have the big ironwood at home, which is awesome. But tonight we're gonna do the salmon. What I did on the salmon is uh, a little salt and pepper, Old Bay, which is uh, really, really good, and then uh, like a honey teriyaki thing, teriyaki with honey in it, make it blaze. I'm gonna stick it on this Traeger. I'm try to get it up to about 350. Cooks pretty quick. You don't want to overcook salmon, so we're gonna put it on there and let it, uh, maybe, well, maybe 15 minutes, it should be done. It's really, really good. <laughs> that is quick. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, dude. That's so bad. Boys. 
I didn't know the Publix was out of the state of Florida. I saw them out of here for 25 years. Hmm. Oh, that's a good company to work Barry Club's in office. Is what I want to know. McCoy did it. I could tell it was that dang fart spray. I just didn't know where it was until I walked in my room. McCoy sprayed all over your pillows. I told him not to. For real, where'd you spray? I don't know where he put <laughs> Oh, God. I mean, dude, it's like, dude. That is so bad. It's all the way down here. <laughs> yeah, like that stuff lingers in the whole house, you idiots. Did you do that? I didn't do that. I was in there washing dishes. McCoy, show yeah. him where it is. It was either him or him. I think you put it on your bed. It ain't on the pillow. I think you put it on your bed. I mean, ha where'd he put it? I was in the good dishes. You lying. I <laughs> tell you, you lying. Where'd you put it? Because you're smiling. I always smile. What is that? McCoy. How'd you know where that was? Here. <laughs> All right, bad, so bro. so the prank became a little bit better because he actually thought it through, and he didn't spray it on my freaking comforter or something. <laughs> That's so bad, though. Let's see if it's gone. Yeah. Is, there, is there another one hiding somewhere? Because it doesn't smell as bad now that you took that out. No, I think you're good. Oh yeah, he's gone. Matt's still here though. Well, what is the plan today? The plan today is to find something special today. Shed spawn could be happening. Uh, Shed spawn is kind of a, a thing that happens different than the herring spawn that we just left from. But uh, the shad, how you find them is you'll look for those white birds and the eagles all like piled up on the shoreline. And the shad just flood the banks and they spawn and then a lot of times the bass will be there too. But uh, I didn't see it yesterday when we ran down the lake. So we're going to run up the river today. Fish Jack Slough and maybe up in that swamp area. Give it two or three hours, see what happens. And, um, and then just concentrate on, on trying to find some fish on some trees up there. That Jack Slough area is a good area. It's an area that we really focused on last year. Um, you know, it did us a little dirty last year because those fish started spawning. But it's totally different. It's a month later. So hopefully we can find something up there today. If not, then we're going to have to get back down there where we kind of was putting some stuff together. There's some, there's some potential in that area that I was at yesterday. I just don't. I have a feeling those fish are getting done spawning there. I think those fish are leftovers. That's what I think. But that's what practice is about, you know. Other than that, I don't know what to do. I mean, we could go to the lower lake and fish. I've just never really been down there. We may have to do that tomorrow if we don't find something special up here today. But plan is to stay up here again today and grind it out. See much of the shad spawn. There's a few birds on the shoreline right here. 
white birds tucked back in the woods, but there's just not a lot of them. You don't hear anything busting. A lot of times you'll hear the shad flickering and frothing. Of course, you'll hear bass blowing up on them as well. So I'm not, um, Find a shad spawn is a little lucky because you just never know where it's going to be. And you, you only have a few hours to find it. A lot of, a lot of green branches in the water. And then when you look at the tree lines right there and you see fresh green cypress arms in the water you know that that's not an everyday thing, otherwise it wouldn't be green. So the water is definitely up. I don't see a fish, I don't hear a fish. I mean, this is kind of crazy, right? We're at Santee and it's just janky. Crazy dude. Dude, that's crazy. Wow. Alright. Good fish. saw him on the scope I was like I pitched over there and he ran to it like quick like that's crazy how good they can see that is crazy how good they can see but we'll let you run on dude today is your lucky day Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the 22nd through 24th, we're open at the house. Yep, yep. So I told them that's probably we would we would do it. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you've got the boat available yep. so you can do that. I do. Okay. I do. The question they had is, where can they park their big coach hang on, with hang the on, Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Hang on. Look at that. Dang. Okay. All right. Well, I figured out something. Might have figured out something. Okay. Good three pounder. All right. We'll drop shot action.
if I could find 12 or 13 pounds on the bed, I'd be pretty pretty happy with that. Because that, that tree deal is just super, I don't know. I don't like it at all. It's really a very time consuming fiasco. Holy sheesh. Oh boy. And I just saw a dang five and a, I mean, two big ones. And then there's a two pounder, two and a half pounder right there. I thought they were on beds. I mean, it's just kind of a bed right there, but. I don't see them coming back out, and they would have come back out by now. If they were catchable, they would have come back out by now. All right, well, we have like six fish on beds now. Six. It's ridiculous. I don't know, but we did find some in this little area. I think there's, there's obviously more. I think I can find some more in here. Couple decent ones too. I mean, weight wise, I don't know what it's gonna take. I'm just gonna catch everything I can catch. But to get out of here with a with a check, I think 12, 13 pounds a day, personally, is what I think you you need. And that's uh, that's stretching it for me right now. But if I can get those fish on those trees to bite a little better. You know, I think I can have 14, 14 pounds or so, maybe 15. And tomorrow morning we're going to start off by throwing spinnerbaits and chatterbaits in some of those uh, windy trees first thing in the morning and see if we can't, you know, run that for like an hour and a half, two hours, cover a hook up and see if we can get two or three bites. If we can get several bites doing that, that's a big deal. And then I'll have to decide what to do, probably run to these sight fish in the tournament. If I can start off the morning catching a couple on spinnerbaits, chatterbaits, then run to the sight fish, catch those. Well, these bahias are nice. I tell you, a good pair of glasses um, is worth the investment because these are glass right here, so they protect me really well. They they super clear. They're not heavy. They are um, the clarity. They don't hurt my eyes. They don't give me a headache. The frame. This is Boneville, which is the frame that I wear probably most of the time. I like that frame. It's it's kind of an everyday frame, so I can wear it, you know, driving or at the beach or sight fishing. I just put my hoodie up, these Afco hoodies, and that'll block. So the Bahia stuff is awesome. Here's a decent fish right there. Such a fun place to fish, man. But we have definitely hit it wrong, dude. That's all I can tell you. This is like trying to figure out what to do. It's like inventing like weird ways to catch them. It's like nothing. I don't know. I can't figure it out. I cannot figure it out. My back hurts. Ugh, super frustrated. One more day to figure this thing out. I finally, you know, that late day thing, I found a, a few fish on beds, so not a ton. The problem with where I just found some of them is that they're really easy to see. So anybody, like literally anybody that went in that bank, they were like, oh, there's one, there's one, there's one. So, you know, that wasn't, there's gonna be, those won't last. That's the problem with that spot. But, I mean, we have tomorrow. we we'll do some thinking on, you know, cause it, that area had a lot of, a, a decent amount of fish. Why, you know, like why? So I need to try to find another place that's similar to that. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's on the lower lake. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Tomorrow morning I'm going to get up. We're going to chuck spinnerbaits and chatterbaits for a couple hours. See if we can't find those fish biting those trees. And then we're going to um, we'll go sight fishing again. Try to find another dozen or so. See what we can do here. So. I mean, they should have inverted this, dude. Like, either 
The first week of March or the second week of it? Or the first week of March or the first it's week of April? Week. I mean, That's what I'm saying. First yeah. week of March, pre-spawn, or while they're spawning, first week of April. Yeah. Because it's terrible. Yeah. It's, it's, um, I mean, it was like one of the best lakes ever last year, and this year it's the complete opposite. I don't know, dude. My head hurts. Like, I, I know. I have, Same I, here. I, I'm, Same I'd here. be happy with like 10 pounds at this point. I know. Here. And I probably won't get paid, but I like I, I just want to like I want to maybe get on and catch those jerkbait fish. I want to catch like fifty, yeah. and I don't even care about the turtle. I just want to just how many I caught nine pounds in it, but I caught eighty three bass. Oh come on, that's not the way to go. Did you get your camera equipment? Oh yeah. Oh, this whole box full of stuff. Jesus, <laughs> dude. There we go. All the gear. Wow. Got a whole goodie bag. Yeah, this, this, funny this is that one uh, Walter was throwing. Last it's funny week. how the best like glad baits look, don't even look that great. I know. Are these yeah, from know. that uh, video? Um, no, no. Trait sent these. My wife sent these. These what are those called? These are clutch. The clutch something. Thank you, Trait. But Patrick was Patrick was throwing this one, and this is more of a herring deal. I guess the action is more herring like. And it's a great thing we're on Santa Cooper this week because there's a ton of herring on these points. Oh, so listen to this. Y'all ready for the Okeechobee report? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So my buddy fished a tournament there Saturday. Yeah. He had 33 pounds. Dude. Yeah, damn. He finished sixth. What? 16 bags over 30, dude. 16. 38, 37, 36, 36, 35, 33s, 34s. It's the hottest lake in the country right now, period. Yeah. How are they catching them? Top water? Frogs. No. Frogs. Oh. Oh. Show 16 slam. bags over 30 pounds, dude. I mean, seriously, I don't know if I've ever heard of a bag that big. I mean, seriously, Okeechobee, I know we're struggling with Okeechobee with grass and all the things, and it is a real issue, but they're chewing, guys. I'm telling you. They don't chew every day like that, but they chew. When they do, they chew. It's, a, it's 16 bags over 30 pounds. There's 75 boats in the tournament. There was over 40 over 20. High low is the high part of your day and the low part of your day. Go ahead, Canterbury. The highs for today is this meal. We got steaks, really good, some vegetables. And I don't mean to sound bad or anything, but the lows is this fishing. It's <laughs> Santee Cooper today. It's pretty tough. Uh, that's my lows. <laughs> my high. My high today was my nap I had in the woods. <laughs> and I was dead asleep, dude, and I heard something. And I opened my eyes. And there was Hackney. I think it was coming through the woods, dude. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, dude. Where did he come from? He came from the from the swamp side, too, by the way. So. And uh, my low. Um, man, my low is just not figuring out how to catch a single. I have no, like, you start to go backwards in confidence. Like, I, I don't even want to cast anymore. Because it's like nothing, I can just cast tomorrow and falls off. My high is similar to his. Um, I was going. I went like three hours without a bite, so I just kind of retied and then like sat there, scrolled Instagram for a little bit, and I just kind of leaned back and just stretching my back, just stretching my back, and all of a sudden like I'm just closing my eyes like this. Back to back tournaments, so you got to just kind of chill a little bit, chill. So that was my high, and then my low was realizing I haven't gotten a bite in three hours. And I had a type of Carolina rig. That's my low. Well, last day of practice. How many days have we been on the road now? So we did seven days for that tournament. So it's in 10 days. I guess 10 days. Travel, another, yeah. So 10 days nonstop. Which, I, again, I don't mind the back-to-back -back events. Actually, I, I kind of like them. You know, stay in the groove a little bit. You get a couple tournaments done. It's good instead of driving back and forth. Um, great accommodations, by the way. I want to tell you right now that, guys, we're staying here at the Clarendon Club. This is where we stayed last time, and it's right here in South Carolina, right here on, on, on Santee Cooper. It's not on the lake, but it's a, it's a hunting lodge. They have uh, duck memberships as well as deer memberships, and they have a lodge. That's where we're at. We're in the lodge right now. Deer on the wall. Stuff. Like, I don't know, 10. 10 or 15 beds in this thing 
and then there's another cabin out there. So there's tons of stuff. So if you ever <clears throat> ever want to sign up for a really cool membership to a club to for duck hunting and deer hunting, be sure to check out the Clarendon Club. It's right here. They've got a really good lake um, here on the property as well. That uh, I think McCoy and them fished it yesterday, so they caught some pretty big bass. But that being said, guys, today's the last day of practice. I've got to figure out something. Uh, I'm going to devote the first two hours of the morning with a spinnerbait chatterbait in my hand and see if we can't figure out how to get five bites. If we can get five bites on those trees early in the morning, maybe that could be a deal. Um, if that fails, you know, I need to go look for some more sight fish, a couple of places that I haven't looked yet. <clears throat> and then I need to, I need to idle around and find some brush. You know, I mean, I, I could, I can see myself catching them out of brush in this tournament. I might have to go down to the lower lake to do it, but this place is, it's, it's strange. It really is fishing strange. And, and when I say strange, we knew this was going to happen at some point. What happens right now on Santee happens every single year. It's just, we sometimes you hit these tournaments perfect. Like we did at Murray. Sometimes you hit them where they're just a little off. Every year is a little different, but uh, the weights are definitely not as high as they, they should be. Um, but you know what, guys? That's what practice is about. We've got to formulate a game plan. The best thing to do, guys, is just come up with a plan of attack to get us paid. That's what we got to do. Get some good points. Let's make the cut. Let's, uh, if we find some good brush piles, we find a couple big fish on the beds, maybe we can pull off something special. But let's, uh, let's focus real hard on catching a good, consistent bag every day. Gosh, dude, it's a giant, dude. I hadn't seen him yet. It's big, though. What is it? It's a bass, dude. It's big, big. Oh, it is a bass, and it's a big one. Yes. Yes. Okay, another one blew up over there. Dude, look at that big and giant, giant, giant. Okay. checking these beds that I found last night and I don't really see much yet some of these fish were on beds real like bright beds and some of these fish were just kind of hanging out like I don't know what they were doing so far I hadn't seen one I wanted to come down here and see which ones are locked and which ones are super catchable but there's one right there fry garter half these fish were probably fry garters because I couldn't see it was so low light I couldn't see the fry and late in the day the fry get down low
Oh, one just smashed it, dude. He hit it. Just sucked it under. He just let it go. Wasn't a big one. Decent keeper, maybe. Sometimes you, these uh, frogfish are tricky, though. Sometimes the little tiny bites will be um, a big fish, and the big explosions sometimes are the little ones. Oh my gosh. There he is. There it is in the mail. Okay, he'll bite the frog. It's good. I think that's all she wrote, fellas. Not very good practice. Again, it's a, it's a junk fishing deal. It's a junk fishing deal for me. And what does that mean? That means I'm gonna I'm gonna probably have to. Hopefully, can catch them doing several different things. If something starts to develop where I can stay on something all day, great. And, this, and the wacky worm on the cypress trees might be the deal, but I'm just not sure how big those fish are. I've seen these. These are all two to five pounds. I've seen several big ones. So, you know, I caught that six pound of the first day in about two foot of water up in this grass on the chatterbait. So, I don't know. This is not what we expected here at Santee Cooper, but... It's a bass tournament, so we just got to catch them better than everybody else. It's just the way it is. No big deal, right? Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> way to finish the day off. <laughs> I'll take rain over any of that cold weather we, we dealt with the rest of the early of the year. I mean, honestly. Yeah. So once it's warm. At least, yeah, at least it's warm. So my game plan is junk fishing. Junk fishing is the key word for today, for this tournament. Junk fishing definition is not having a clue on how to really catch five fish doing one thing. So you gotta try to catch five fish doing five or six things in five or six different little areas and fish the conditions. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah, it's a wrap. Practice was, uh, you know, it, actually, it was tough, but I like a tournament like this. Now, I do have to settle down. I do have to make really good decisions. I have to not waste time doing things that aren't working. If I can, if I can just make the perfect decisions all week, I can make it. I can have a good tournament. And that's just how it is. So, yeah, it's time to go get the boat ready and possibly dinner. Not good. My practice was not good. What's your plan for tomorrow? I don't know yet. I'm gonna try everything I can to catch five. And then we'll go from there. It's not very good. I don't have much to go on, so. We'll figure it out tomorrow on the fly. Santee's fishing tough. It's stingy to get bites right now. <laughs> but I did figure out a couple ways to generate some bites. So um, I've kind of got two little patterns going. Um, I am, fingers crossed, I plan on fishing the lower lake. Uh, and the reason I kind of concentrate on the lower lake, of course, I look at the forecast, it looks manageable. So uh, Lord willing, it's manageable enough to fish the lower lake. 
when I came into this tournament, I looked at the lake level. Last year, the lower lake wasn't really a player last year. The lake was, the water was low down there. It's high this year. It's actually above full pool on the lower lake. So I wanted to spend a little bit more time down there looking around. Um, I spent two of my three days down there. So I did find some stuff. I don't know the potential. I have not put my hands on but one bass all practice. I shook the rest of them off. So uh, I do think we're going to catch five tomorrow. I don't know if they're going to weigh 10 pounds or 20 pounds. So fingers crossed we do run into a couple of them six, seven, eight pounders that Santee's known for. All right, look at all the stuff I took out of my boat. Literally took that out. I do that, I lift my boat up for practice. You know, with all my different things. and You know, and that way I have options. And then what I don't need, I take out. So, tomorrow, game plan. I'm just going to have to go fishing. Like, literally, uh, yeah. <laughs> I say that lightly, but I just have to go fishing because it's like you saw. I mean, practice was very inconsistent as far as my bites. So can I get a few bites on trees? Yes. Can I get a few bites in the grass? Yes. Can I catch a few fish sight fishing? Yes. Tomorrow's dead calm. Um, I may sight fish a little bit more tomorrow and then save my fishing fish more for day two when there's not very many sight fish left, A, and B. Um, I'll have some places to fish, not, you know, burn those trees up. Because I don't think there's, I mean, if I get lucky and catch a decent bag and make the cut, I don't know if there's three days worth of fish on those trees, personally. So, save some of them. Be kind of cool. So, tomorrow, I'm going to start off with the chatterbait in the morning on those trees and then go to some of that grass. And then we'll just kind of play it by ear at that point. So, you know, got really, really wet coming in. And I've got, uh... Got swim jigs rigged up, chatterbaits rigged up. Hopefully I can catch a few of those sight fish. They're not easy to catch, I'll say that. They are not easy to catch. They've been a little difficult. So, but it was pretty cool. You know, that anything about this practice, I have to realize the fact that I've caught, I caught a big one every day. I caught a big, like six pounder, five and a half, six pounder every day. So, you know, you do that along with some threes and whatever else you can catch. A decent bag my predictions on this tournament right now someone or several people will unlock the code on those offshore fish i did not quite unlock the code on the offshore fish even though i caught a little bit of fish out there and i'm going to exp expand on that a little bit tomorrow but someone's got them hemmed up somebody's got a couple little patches of grass out there on one of those flats that has a school of fish on it that tomorrow morning there's going to be a shad spawn going on in that grass and they're going to catch a big bag of fish it's just going to happen and, and as you watch this tournament transpire the guy that wins the tournament or the couple people that do really well in this tournament are probably going to have that opportunity where it's a shad spawn offshore shad spawn i didn't quite find it yet and that's one reason i'm going to still give it a little bit of effort tomorrow just because if you find it you know things will get right pretty quick so that's uh that's basically my game plan. Hopefully we can catch a nice bag tomorrow, make the cut. That's our main goal, just make Saturday. And then uh, we'll fish our butts off to try to make Sunday. So we're gonna take it one day at a time. Canterbury, you know, he's he, was, he got some decent bites on trees today. Matt's gonna catch them pretty good. He always does down here. He's got some stuff kind of away from everybody. So that being said, guys, I'm gonna go to bed and um, get up in the morning. We're going to start a whole new video because we've been doing back-to-back -back events. And thank you so much for watching all of our videos. We've been pumping them out. McCoy, Dylan, hey, you guys have to give McCoy and Dylan a big thumbs up, okay, for pumping these videos out. They're editing in the trucks. They're editing when we get up in the morning. They're editing on the way to the ramp. I mean, it's crazy the amount of work these guys are putting in just to get this content out for you. So thank you so much for following our stuff. Really appreciate all the support, guys. I know there's a lot of other channels out there to watch. So thank you so much for being part of the team, and we'll see you, and good night. Bam!